Welcome back, everyone. This is theCUBE's live coverage here in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE with Dave Vellante, SaaS Innovate 2024. Mike Blanchard, VP of Customer Intelligence at SaaS, and Reagan Yan, CEO of Digital Alchemy, is here in theCUBE. Great to have you guys on. Thanks for coming on, appreciate you. Thank you. Yeah, great to be here. Great stage performance up on Thank the you. keynote this morning, and you got a customer. I love the name of the company, by the way. <laughs> it, I just think, in my mind, I'm thinking, pulling LLMs, fusing them together, integrating and having value, so. Shaking them up. Um, Our logo great. used to have uh, lots of ones and zeros on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I think Alchemy is a great way to look at how data is really interacting with each other. Right. We Absolutely. think there's a lot of chemistry behind how data works. So, take a minute to explain what you guys do, and then we can get into some of the chat. Yeah, so we're a, we're a global marketing services organization. Um, we implement and manage marketing automation um, for, for organizations and you know, in many cases we're, we're augmenting and supporting their existing capabilities, um, but we're very focused on automation. So we, we do a lot of implementation, but we're, we're, our, speciali our speciality is to get marketing automation implementations to automate um, because we, you know, there's a lot more marketing yeah. automation yeah. implementations in place than there is marketing automation. You know, the ad tech, <laughs> the ad tech business, mark tech business is changing, those stacks right. yep. are well known. By the way, they're also cutting edge. The database work involved over the years. I mean, it's a total platform, but in every revolution there's an abstraction layer of no, new stuff. I mean, kind of puts a cap on, doesn't really shut down, maybe changes some of the dynamics uh, of what was before but the new generative AI is not pre-programmed stuff, it's generating stuff on the fly, so that you need data, <laughs> and you need to have outcomes. Yeah. So this is a big part of the story here at SaaS. How, how do you guys see that as a, as a solution evolving? Because you're going to have net new components. Yep. The game is still the same. I want to put something at the right place at the right time, that has the contextual relevance for yep. the people I'm trying to reach, and that's going to require, again, another quant jock-like automated system. What do you guys see for that? Because digital marketing, your CMO is all behind this. She yep. sees AI being a real driver of, well, of I think, change. I, I think you said it. I think I, I describe it as a sort of tornado, tornado of change, hmm. but actually the constant is still the same, hmm. right? And if you think back you know, 30 years now, consumers have had a lot of choice yeah. about who they do business with, and you know, they will you know, do it on their own terms, right? And there's also so many others that they can go to that the world has just got more complicated. You know, so at the end of the day, trust between the consumer and the brand is the most important thing for generating loyalty, share of wallet. But now the brands have got so much to deal with, right? They have all of the explosion of the fact that they've nowhere to hide, <laughs> right? Consumers can go and find out about every product yeah. and service, not from the brand, but about someone writing a review posting something on social. Reddit. People like you, yeah, <laughs> exactly, right? So that's, that's just get, that's the first thing. Second thing, they've got people coming into their industry that are trying to re-engineer the business processes. Then you go to the technology, right? And then you have the whole, I mean, we're in probably the most innovative part of the market, marketing and advertising technology. It hits every trend, every buzz term comes to life first through these kind of technologies. So, you know, today you kind of got these poor brands that are still trying to do the same thing, manage consumer relationships, they're dealing with generative AI, cookie apocalypses, you know, <laughs> you know all of these kind of CDPs, composability, yeah. marketing stacks. Clean right? rooms. Clean rooms, <laughs> <It's> right? Like, <laughs> new, <laughs> new regulations, uh, yeah. e EU's coming, not, not that you're part of that anymore, but. Uh, but, <laughs> but yeah, and then they do all that, and then the re regulations are all changing yeah. right, at the same time. So it's, it's yeah. not an easy life, but. Yeah. You know, I would say the heart of everything comes down to what we're seeing now, generative is bringing it to life, it's the data, right? It's how you, the data is the lifeblood underneath. Talk about your relationship with each other, obviously I can yeah. see that, I'm starting to connect dots on my head, just jump right to it. Talk about the relationship because I can imagine that AI is going to help with a lot of the data interchange because you got a lot of different diverse data sources and types, I mean you're talking about yep ads, you've got different sources, you've got APIs. 85% of the traffic on the internet is API based. Yeah. Okay, so that's an interconnect. So data's going to be exchanging. So talk about your relationship, how you guys work together. I can envision this being pretty cool. Yeah, you want to go? So, so I think, you know, SaaS is you know, developing the platforms that create connectivity and access to the data. Um, what we do is we help clients actually make the most of the that data, right? So, you know, I think one of the, there's two things that generative AI is going to transform in marketing. The first is um, is the analytics process. So, you know, at the moment, clients don't use all of the data they got. 
Um, not because they can't access it, because their brains just can't get to all of the data in, 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 in a timely enough manner to actually execute. So generative AI is going to significantly change the way we query and understand the data. You can ask you know, a machine a question about my data and it'll come back to you. So that's going to increase the scope of data that, that marketers are going to be able to use to generate their campaigns, right? Because um, at the moment, you know, I've got this much data, but I only use this much data. So and it's not lack of data. It's not lack of data. At the moment, it's, it's the not ability, lack of data. the ability to leverage it. Correct. And Gen AI will change that by being able to... Do you think that will uncover in the near term, the lack of data? In other words, I, I, I need more data, I need to go to other outside sources. Actually, the data that I haven't been using, that I haven't had access to is crap. <laughs> well, I think, so I think that's, that's actually part of a separate trend that's going on with the deprecation of third-party cookies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. is you know, a lot of marketing organizations have kind of gone out and you know, gotten third party data and connected data together um, and they've kind of neglected their own data. Yeah. You know? um, and what we're seeing you know, over the last sort of 12 to 18 months is organizations going, oh, these third party cookies might not be there soon. I better focus on my own data. So you know, there's a lot of focus now on, um, on own data, uh, first party data. There's like a lot journey mapping, all that kind of stuff. Journey mapping on your own data, not journey mapping on somebody else's okay, data, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, because the, 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 the cookie crutch or the cookie binky right. is going. It's, yeah. and, it, and it suddenly just snapped in a lot of people's minds, go, oh my God, you know. So what we're seeing, and this is where I think SAS is really strong, is that SAS is really strong in complex data. Um, so, you know, the, a lot of the other platforms are really good in the digital data that is, you know, digital data is much easier to stitch together than digital to legacy data. You know, when you start to go into, you know, your, your legacy banking systems or your leg legacy POS systems, much harder to stitch all that data together. Um, and I think that's where we're seeing a lot of focus from marketers now, suddenly waking up going, actually, I got I to focus on my own data. And, and I think, we, you know, we, our history in this space goes back well over 20 years to the, the old direct marketing days where actually there was good behaviors around managing first party data, you know, providing you know, personalized communication at that time through post, those kind of things. The digital world, kind of, people got lazy, right? Mm. Because they didn't have to manage first party data. But suddenly they're now coming back, it's sort of going full circle, coming back again and saying, oh, actually I do need to understand who this individual is, and I need to understand and use that data responsibly, you know, both for what I'm telling you, but also how I'm, you know, telling you how I'm using your data. So it's just, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a kind of a world that's just spun back round again. Doesn't it also put pressure on, on firms and brands to actually rethink their, their content strategies? Because they now need you know, original content. Uh, uh, but I, I actually think that's the other opportunity for Gen AI is in yeah. content generation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, one of my hobby horses in marketing is, is A-B testing. I hate A-B testing. You know, I've never seen an A-B test where, you know, test A or test B is, you know, more than 10 or 20% better than the other one, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's mostly born out of our, our limitation to actually create content because it's been handcrafted. You know, the yeah. creative's been handcrafted. And, but, but with Gen AI, we'll now be able to create 20 or 30 different propositions yeah. and test them simultaneously. Scale it, yeah. And scale it. So mm -hmm. we'll be able to test at scale, mm -hmm. um, and we'll be able to execute that at scale. But it's scale. also getting the, the, the data, the micro segments alongside the content, right? Yep. So, you know, if you know that there are multiple different variants of consumers or audiences within that same campaign. You can test those. You yeah. can then break down your content into mm -hmm. multiple variants of content, mm -hmm. right? So the two have to go symbiotic and hand in hand. So the content piece has to map also with the data. So you're talking about personalization at scale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mass customization, but, but, but at scale and personalized. Yeah, that's yeah. new. Right, and, right. So I mean, it's been, as a concept, it's yeah. been there for a long time. Yeah, but it's exceedingly but, difficult to actually execute. But our ability to execute has been limited by our ability to create, you know, um, uh, very targeted content or offers and very small segments. Mm. Um, Let me ask you a question on this on this um, elusive goal to get the get the data. A/B testing might shift into more of how do I get actually good data in the organics market. So as a marketer, where are the customers? Where are those watering holes? I mean, LinkedIn's not great at analytics. Uh, Twitter's got an API, who knows what's going that's going to be one day. Reddit, so as you start seeing where users are gathering, first party, I can see that being, will there be a, a shift back to company sites, or is that already happening? It's already happening. 
already happening. So you advise, get your first party watering hole, it's website, web application. Here's what I tell people, right? If, if you're using third party data, it's like having a, um, it's like a Tinder profile. Right. Third party data is the equivalent to a Tinder profile. I mean, you know, it kind of represents the person, um, you know, but it's, it's subjective and it's not a, you know, and it's what I want to tell the world, right? Um, you can meet somebody based on a Tinder profile, but you'll never build a relationship based on their Tinder profile. To, to, to build a relationship with somebody, you need to go on a date, you need to, you need to talk yeah. to them, you need to get information about that person that isn't on their profile, yeah. right? And so to me, a third party cookie is, a Tinder profile. Your first party data is the data that you've collected going on dates. And that's what you need to build a relationship. You cannot build a relationship on a, on a that's a great That's a great analogy, actually, the dating app relationship. <laughs> Let me throw one more uh, uh, variable into your mix. I love that analysis. Let's throw the Coachella example in there. I love to go to festivals where all my tribe is. Right. And there's different sections and different stages. So there's still that group dynamic. Mm -hmm. I want to be with my peers. Right. I want to help show have a relationship with the, with the, with the website. Do the, does, does the has site turn into Coachella, or does it, or is that going to be third party? And then uh, that's a challenge. I mean, we're seeing a lot of people trying to go where their peers are. Uh, and LinkedIn's doing that right now because people think that's for business and they're growing because Facebook's changed and inst get Instagram, WhatsApp. But I think, I think people are recognizing now, or brands are recognizing that those platforms, what they're ultimately doing is monetizing first party data, mm. right? They're just doing it in different ways. And I think what you're seeing now is some of those brands respond and say, we could monetize our own first party data by providing, you know, in, for example, through retail media, right? Why are Amazon and you know, Facebook and Google doing all this monetization of advertising when people are coming to my website, I could promote other people's products. And that's what you, know, you see in this growth of this whole retail media, yeah. the monetization yeah. opportunities. Because people are spying now, you know, people know the big guys are got big targets behind them because no one wants yeah. to kind of get caught up now in their ecosystems, you know, and they're saying, well, yeah. they're just taking me out yeah. of business ultimately. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. well, so also the users are the, pro are the product right. in that use case. So, yes. so you, I, I think this is a good point. You're, you, the shift to controlling the user experience seems to be the common thread here, the, whether it's a dating app vibe or <laughs> hosting Coachella. Right. I mean, right. you want both, right? right. People will probably- is those that understand their customers better whatever will win, because but, they'll be able to build better products, better services, better communications. So the they, faster you learn, as Brian says, the faster you'll win. But they have to do it in a governed way. So I agree. To, to the point, I mean, how many times have we said something, whether there's an Alexa or Siri around, and all of a sudden you get this ad, yeah. and you're like, oh my God, they're listening. And so to right. the point, if, if you're part they're of the ecosystem and they're getting regulated, but okay, if you're going to take it in-house though, You've got to do it in a responsible so way. Ha significantly higher burden on the, um, on the part. And I think there's this movement, um, you know, a lot of people talk about data ownership. You know, organizations say, you know, data is my, you know, my greatest asset, my most valuable asset, blah, blah. I actually think that organizations need to move away from an idea that they own the data to, to an idea that they are the custodian. The yeah. customer owns their own data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They own their own data. Yeah. You, you, know, you, you are the custodian of their data and as, you, and as the custodian you have a responsibility you know, to, to that customer. And I think yeah. increasingly organizations are moving in that direction and I think it's also part of this first party data because people are believing and, yeah. and understanding that they can control that better if they control yeah. what those customers So are. circle back to how you yeah. guys are actually working, working together, together to solve this problem. <laughs> 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 I, I need to understand that. It's like a master class in digital yeah, marketing. Right? Yeah. I'm learning yeah. a lot. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> I was going to ask one more question, if you don't mind. <laughs> oh, before you before we in. do that, yeah, yeah. So knowledge graphs and neural networks are a big part of the AI conversation. Mm -hmm. um, and as you look at like social graph, we see that. It's also distribution and who you're connected to. So as you look at the value of the graph data, when you start looking at public open web or open AI models where, oh, not open AI, but like open source, people want to connect with each other. Is there a data source or opportunity that you guys see where some, somewhere down the road there will be a graph structure of people communicating openly where they own their own data or I think what well, or, well, or is, that, is that fantasy? Yeah, is well that, there's certainly been movements to try and create those kind of open ecosystems. Um, I've not seen them yet take hold in any shape or form. Yeah. I think more the commercial entities kind of, you know, are doing their thing. 
with them. I think what we're seeing is that idea, I think one of you mentioned the clean room example, the, yeah. the idea that how do we bring different parties data together and get the benefit where mutually we can unlock more value together. Um, and yeah. so that is a exciting sort of when you see the sort of, I, yeah. I guess the, 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 the alchemy, the alchemy of yeah, the data. Exactly, the, the advertising and the kind of classic brand worlds yeah. coming together. I so. think you're right on that. I think that's right. So, on how that. are yeah. you guys solving these problems and, and adding value so, to customers? So, I say so we 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 provide effectively the technology and the platform to provide you know automated marketing campaigns at scale. You know, and I, I guess our job is really yeah. to you know help brand. I mean, at any moderate scale, brands need to build technologies, processes and inside their ecosystems to get personalization right, to create the appearance that we understand you as a customer and a consumer. So we're providing that, that technology. Um, it sits on top of our, our analytical capabilities. So um, what a way I would describe it is we connect to the data. We're then interpreting the data to build the understanding, right? We're converting raw data into patterns of behavior. And then at an operational level, we create effectively audiences, segments for targeting, and that delivers the campaign cycle through. Ultimately, that ends up in posts on Facebook, um, direct marketing, you know, digital communications. But that all has to be sequenced into journeys. And, and, it, and it's bring your own data model? or No, no, so it's bring your own data. Okay, so it's bring so your own data. So that, what, what if I don't have the, the volume of data, I got to go figure it out, I got to go get it, then call you guys, or can you help me do that? In so we words, can help you do that. So we, we, we spend a lot of time with our customers when they're, when they're if they're starting on this journey, um, building data strategies for them. Yeah. You know, where, where's the data that, you know, because a, a lot of, there's actually a lot of data within organizations that people don't know about. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's this data, you know, sitting in all sorts of repositories around organizations. So the first thing that we will generally do is go, where's the data? Um, and how do we stitch that data together? And then, you know, um, look at the the data the data gaps, and then see where, how can we how can we plug those uh, those gaps? Yeah. Um, different, you know, we we operate around the world, and different geographies have different accesses to you know different uh, second party data and stuff like that. Um, but in the U.S., the second party data is pretty good. And, um, and image create. I mean, you're talking about multimodal. Yeah. You were Google Next last week. I mean, image creation. Obviously, you know, it's 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 moving fast. Right, a lot of it was manual before. I tried to prompt it, didn't work. I oh, forget it. it Chat GPT can't spell. Dally can't spell. That's getting much, much better. So it, you, it, you plug into that. Yes. Right. So, so what we're sorry. Go. So what we're doing is we're enabling those processes. Yeah. Right. Because right. you know, whatever whatever organizations want to do, you've got to set up the processes to make sure that that happens well. Yeah. Right. Um, and there's always there's going to be, um, you know, the machines can do the the grunt work. But someone still has to tell the machine what to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, they're not at that point where they know, they know exactly what to do yet. And, um, and then you know you've got to think think of things like exclusion rules, contact policies, all of the overheads that the the team still have to manage. Yeah. Right. right. So because obviously if I start over communicating to you, get those communications wrong, you're just going to have the backlash and the the negative effect of what you're actually trying to achieve. But I heard a I heard a great quote yesterday that um you know marketers are worried about you know, that AI is going to take over their job. Right. And that, you know, the job is not going to be taken by AI, but it might be taken by a marketer who understands AI. <laughs> <laughs> Human in the loop, driving the new, the new, yeah, new right. toy. I mean, it's like, how do you drive AI? And it's the data strategy. Yeah, I mean, even automation, you know, like, if, if you look at the industrial revolution, the industrial revolution didn't create unemployment, right? AI is not going to create unemployment. It's yeah. just going to redistribute where the work is done. Yeah, I don't see. I don't see AI. I, I mean, I mean it's an interesting conversation because the first time ever you're replacing. You, you know, machines have always replaced humans, but now you're replacing humans with cognitive functions. Steve Cohen was on TV the other day saying we're going to a four-day work week. I go, is he? Is Absolutely. he gaming? Is he gaming the system because he's a workaholic and he just wants to be able to get pick up three more days, or or is it actually going to happen? But you're I saying think that's four-day work week, but the machine is going to enable that, and the right. better you so can I'll, use I'll the machine. So I'll get paid the same amount of money, and I'll work four days a week and, because the machine's doing and the other you'll day. Produce way more yeah. output. Yeah, and be more creative with that right. day off. Right, and we'll be more creative, right? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I think that's, you know, I think, and that's why I think AI opens opportunity because it opens the opportunity to 
to access more of the data, it opens yeah. opportunity to, you know, to, have, to be more creative. So John, yeah. six day work week in your future, because I know how you work. <laughs> no, I work eight days a week. <laughs> <laughs> guys, great job coming on. Give a final plug, what you guys are doing. Big exhibits here, you got augmented analytics, you got all the, the innovation hub here. Your, the customer intelligence piece is your piece. Yes. Yeah, demos, give a quick, give right. a quick plug for what you do at SaaS. Yeah, so I, I'm responsible for the marketing and advertising technologies at SaaS, so it's, it's pretty cool. It's the front end of how we take data and analytics and apply it to consumer experience for you know, many of the largest brands globally. So it's, awesome. a, it's a fun part, it's the most innovative part of the industry, um, but it's also something that comes with a huge amount of responsibility from SaaS. Safeguarding consumer data is probably, you know, goes alongside core banking data, <laughs> health data, those kind of things. So we, we have yeah. to do it in a, a very responsible way. Reagan, you're going to go to Mexico while you're here in the, in the States. Put a plug in for what, you, what you're doing and, and the firm. So, you know, what we, what we do is we make, we make it work. You know, <laughs> uh, you know, it's as simple as that. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's a lot of marketing automation. Um, but we're the, we're the guys who make it work. You come in, you do the fixer. And the, give them the we, keys We spend a lot of time done. fixing. You pass the keys when they're done, you call we, it. We, we'll stay with you. Oh, you so, okay. so in, in, in nearly all cases with our clients, we, we fix it, um, we get it humming, and then we stay with you. Got it. And we've got clients that have been with us for 15, 20 years. Awesome, awesome. congratulations. Thanks for coming on the Thank Cube. You guys. Yeah. Really appreciate Thank you guys. It. I'm John Furrier here at the Cube, the leader in tech coverage with Dave Vellante, head of Cube Research. More coverage after this short break.